Hey there, digital painter folks. My name is Terry Dana Chikimiak II. I'm the digital painter, and uh, I know it's been a little bit, and I keep apologizing every time. I'm not going to apologize anymore. Life is crazy right now. So I'm going to try and get videos out as much as I can. I'm moving to Michigan in less than 20 days or like 25 days, and so there's a lot going on in my life. But I am here for a video because this week, these evenings, I've got a little bit of extra time. And I wanted to bring you the first, my first look at Rebel 2, the watercolor application uh, for the desktop, which I think is pretty amazing. Where this is, you know, this is my first, uh, my first look. I mean, I've played with it a little bit, but these are going to be my first reactions to the program compared to the old uh, Re Re uh, Rebel 1. So understand that this is not a full in-depth tutorial. This is not. You know, I'm not going to go piece by piece through every piece of this uh, program right now. This is all about just getting that first look. So, why don't you join me? All right. So, uh, here we go. Uh, I've uh, just done a quick sketch in it. One of the things uh, that you'll notice is that uh, if you've used the original Rebel, uh, that the uh, there's some different things here like brush creator uh, we're looking at uh, the tilt is now over here uh, colors and color sets nice setups here uh, some actually imported ones we'll, we'll look at all that in just a little bit uh, but the big thing that I found is that uh, they've done some really nice work to the program and they've started to strengthen the core of it which is or at least for me, is watercolor. Uh, the watercolor engine is still very strong. It still gives probably one of the cleanest watercolor feels to it. Um, what I'm going to do real quick, just to kind of show you, is I'm going to grab a brush. We're going to use a filbert. And let's grab like a sky blue. I like to go fairly light when I'm doing something like this, because I like to layer. And we'll just bring it in. So right now, and I'm going to stop there so we can look at it. Uh, right now, you'll see that the my, I have a size setting, a pressure setting, a loading setting, a water setting. Uh, if I were to, for example, let's take the load down and the water up, see how those look different, right? Which is, again, very nice. Uh, let me get something a little more saturated so you can kind of see. I'm going to come up here, and you can kind of see the movement as it dries. Now, one of the cool things with Rebel is over here in the layers section, if you click this, you can actually see where the water is on the page, right? So just hovering over it, show wet. You've also got some things, pause diffusion, wet layer, dry layer, and fast dry. Water is removed, but the layer itself remains wet. So, for example, I'm going to turn that off. Well, we can see all of those areas are fairly wet, you know, from light wet up here to more wet down here. If I grab a second color and come in here, there is diffusion still happening. You can see diffusion still happening where it is still wet on wet. And so for anybody that's trying to, you know, when I do watercolor, natural media, oftentimes I'll touch it with the back of my hand to kind of get a sense of how wet it is if I can't see the droplets. But here you can just do a quick look like that. And, we, you know, we could come in with a different color. This is really going to start to get muddy, but that's fine. And you'll see that it blends into that. Okay. It's picking up the color. You can see some nice rainbow effects, different colors being created. And you can see it's still wet. So if I come over here and I hit the dry, it all dries. Okay. So you can see there's no difference between when I click this to see wet versus dry. Okay. So if I were to come now over this with a different color, it's layered on it. It's not, notice it's not mixing in. Okay, so it's like doing a wet layer over top of a dry layer. So it's, you know, it's one of the few programs out there, engine-wise, that really does feel like natural watercolor. Um, one of the cool things here, so I'm going to come back here. We're going to wet the whole paper, and boom, we have the whole paper wet. You can see it, it started to spread more after I wet the paper. So I'm going to undo that real quick. Let me undo. And let me make sure 
Okay, so I'm going to redo just that one line. Okay, and you can see it's it's spreading a little bit, but it's on a dry paper. So if we come here now, watch watch the green when I wet the whole paper. Oh, that's dry. When I wet the whole paper, did I wet the whole paper? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Oh, but I had already dried it. So let's go back one more. Okay, so it's wet right now. Okay, so if I wet the whole paper, look at it spread. Look at it spread. Look at those edges. And you can see it's it's blending into that. It's just going to keep spreading, you know, until the mathematical innards of Rebel tell it stops, or we just hit stop. And now everything's dry. Okay. So that's cool, but there's even some more cooler things. I hope... Okay, good. I'm not doing this on my pencil there. See this tilt up here? I'm going to turn the tilt on, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the whole paper. whole paper is wet now. And I'm going to just... I'm going to get a nice saturated color. And now I'm tilted down, and look at you just... It just starts to drip. Now, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to turn that drip. Whoa, it's like I'm turning the paper. Maybe turn it this way. Now, again, this is with a lot of water, a little bit of loading. We've wet the entire paper, as you can see. And you can get some really nice drippage. So let's bring the loading up, right? And we're going to do another one. You can see I'm still straight down right now. So it does spread outwards a little bit, but look at it come down. We can see the whole paper is still wet there. And then if we wanted to, we could immediately dry it there. Notice it stopped. So now the whole paper is dry. If I do the same thing, still does it because again, I have a fairly high water setting. A lot of, but it's, look at that, look at that. It's just a lot. Look at the drips. We're just going to kind of let it let it drip. Okay. So that's one of the few things that a lot of the other programs can't mimic. If you want to do drips, you have to do them in a, a artificial way, you know, using I mean, this has it too. This has splatter, right? So if I click the splat and I come in here, you can create some splat. Now look at it drip too, because I still have it on the tilt. Or you can sponge. Look at that. Okay. So the engine, the engine behind Rebel is what makes it, what I feel makes it really cool. So we're going to dry this entire paper. Some of the other cool things, and I'm going to do some other videos that kind of go more in depth into each of the tools so you can really see what they look like. Again, this is, you know, first feel of the entire uh, program. I'm going to add a layer. And you can see we've got, uh, over in the tool palette, we've got our watercolor, we've got acrylic, we have pastel, pencil, ink pen, marker, airbrush, eraser and then down here we've got a blend tool a smudge tool a water tool so you can p apply water locally rather than applying the entire thing say you're just working on a certain aspect of your painting you can apply that water locally and you can actually dry locally as well we've got blow this is actually I, I'm still kinda of playing with blow I don't know how I'd use it in here let me turn off the tilt so if I put down oh, I'm on the wrong thing. So we're going to undo that. Let me get the watercolor. Oh, and I have the sponge on. So let's get rid of that. There we go. So if I take this in here and I grab the blow, you can kind of blow it in a direction. See how I'm, maybe we over here will blow out. I haven't figured out how I'd use that in my watercolor. I'm not, I don't, I don't generally blow my work. Uh, and then you've got your color picker, which you can actually sample size, one pick, 
three by three or five by five. And then you've got your ability to transform your layers and then our selection tool, which is, you know, kind of typical, okay? Um, one of the cool new features of Rebel 2 is the brush creator. And let me open that up and make it bigger, make it bigger. There we go. Uh, very similar, if you've ever used Procreate, I feel like it's very similar to Procreate's brush uh, creation, uh, Procreate for the iPad. Um, it is, you know, again, Rebel's fairly young, so there's not a ton of settings, but there are settings you can play with, and I haven't gone in-depth into that, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but this is key for those people who like to create their own brushes, um, which I do um, once I get into a program and really start playing with it. Okay, uh, over on the right side, you again, you've got your navigator, you've got your tilt, which we've played with, your color, your color sets, stencils now, right? So you can actually take a stencil and, oops, I'm on, there we go, and you can paint inside a stencil. I'm just going to paint this phase that happens to be there. And then, um, Nope. There's a way to move the stencil. And I just have to remember, I don't know all the, oh, there it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to, there you go. So creates a stencil, actually very much like ArtRage's stencils, if you've used ArtRage before. But you've got all sorts of stencils that you can play with. And then, of course, you can um, remove the stencils when you're done. There we go remove that and you can actually create your own stencils so if I were to go back into layers and turn that off and say I created something I need less loading and bump and we need a new layer so let's say I oh, I'm white right now okay let's get rid of the white And then we go over to stencils, and you can actually, I have to remember how to do it, create stencil from layer. So now we have a stencil based off of the layer. So, which is nice, but it's just something that I've done in, um, in ArtRage and then shared my stencils in the past. Um, the one thing I haven't found, what is, oh, you can, and then you can export I guess just as an image file? Oh, that's kind of silly. Um, what would be ideal, there we go, what would be ideal is to be able to then import stencils. So I haven't found that yet. There's probably a way. I just don't know what it is yet. So give me time. I'm going to remove that from the library. And you can see, you know, again, it comes with some stencils that were already in it. You can make your own. So something I'm going to be playing with. Um, but one of, like I said, one of the things that I say is, is the improvements that they've made really, I think, is starting to bring it uh, more on par with a lot of the other programs on there. It's still what I feel is a specialty program because it really is, for me, the reason I would use it is because of the watercolor uh, engine. The other ones work great. You know, you've got acrylic. Let's, uh, this is just a, f uh, let's go a flat two brush, right? So, you know, I haven't played much with the other things. And then let's say we wanted to blend it. Yeah, so you can blend it. So, you know, you have those abilities. Um, the pastels are actually kind of cool. You know, really picks up that texture. And then you can... So use the smudge tool to smudge it. Now that's smudge one. There's a smudge two. Uh, haven't played a ton. Again, haven't played a ton with those. Uh, you could use the pencils in a color pencil sort of way. So this is a, let's go 2H. And I've got it like a blue. You know, you come in here. And let's say we want a little bit of this mixed in. And then, of course, you can come in and smudge it a little bit. So, you know, the pencils, the pens are nice. I want to either create more or um, see if other people are, are doing more. I think there's a way. Yeah, you can import brush presets. Um, but, oops, that's, let's go black so it looks like pen. 
and in the uh, inventory there is um, you can see here all of the different things the one thing that I haven't found and it's probably in here somewhere that's shape is I haven't found a smoothing but I'm gonna assume somewhere there's a way to make it so it goes smooth but even not I mean that's and then this is a dip pen they call it a dip pen and then of course your fountain pen okay so the pen tools kinda nice markers okay um, all they have right now is bullet and chisel uh, it really needs a brush tip because it's what I use but it looks you know overall it looks pretty nice and you can kinda blend over I mean that's that's really actually quite lovely I, I'm not a big um, I'm not a big airbrush person so somebody else is gonna have to rate that but yeah so that's what we've got again uh, general review of it um, what I think they've done is they have really enhanced it I'm actually gonna do this picture in watercolor over the next day or so uh, so you can kinda see and I'll record it so you guys can kinda see where it's going from but uh, I'm I'm very impressed with the work they've put in and imp the improvements they've made. Uh, like, so if you're using this on a tablet, you can use an accelerometer and send. I mean, you can actually move your tablet to do your tilting. Uh, I you know, for you can do square. Uh, I prefer the circle. Uh, you can do sliders down below. It has HSL, which I prefer, or you could do RGB. Um, so there's a lot of different settings there. You again, you've got these color sets, body, autumn, and again, these are things that you can then import and export, right? So you can actually oh, create a color set from an image file, uh, which I haven't played with either. Um, so some really cool things there. Down here in the layers, layers have the usual. Uh, you can do tracing layers. I'm not getting into that, but the blending modes are now available, uh, which is nice in your opacity, and you have your locks down here. So huge improvements is what I'm going to say. They've done some really, really lovely work. So um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit subscribe on the Digital Painter on YouTube. Uh, and um, I'm going to be doing some more of these. Again, I move in like less than 25 days uh, and in the new place I have a cool little setup that I'm going to be doing for my videos um, but I have to get situated so uh, before the end of the summer's out you'll start seeing more videos I just have to get there all right that's it for today my name is Terry Dane Jikimiak the second I am the digital painter and uh, I want to thank you so much for tuning in for our quick look over the new Rebel 2 take care mm -hmm.